When you consider basic transistor amplifiers, like this common emitter amplifier, or like this common collector amplifier, you might notice that one of the standard ways of establishing DC bias points is to use resistors. There's a kind of a letter H that you notice with both of these configurations. The kind of bias points that we want in a transistor is usually a high voltage at the collector, a medium voltage at the base, and a lower voltage at the emitter. With the bipolar transistors, that ensures that the transistor is properly biased in the forward active mode. In this video, though, we're going to look at another alternative way to establish nice bias points across a transistor. We're going to be using current sources. And you might be thinking, well, why would you use current sources? Why don't we just use resistors like this? Isn't that good enough? Well, as you can see in a few moments, there are certain advantages to using current sources. Current sources are also something that are easier to make when you're dealing with integrated circuits. You can create current sources, for example, by implementing current mirrors on chip, as we've seen in a recent video. Let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to first consider the common collector configuration. Let's not worry about the input side of the circuit for a moment. Let's just consider the output side. In this example, we've established a DC bias point with this emitter resistor, R sub E, but I want to show something that's wrong with that, or not really wrong, but something that's not so nice about having that resistor there. If the transistor is working correctly, we probably have some signal that's coming into the base, and then we want to buffer that signal with a common collector amplifier. The signal then shows up there at the emitter, and then the signal shows up at the load. The gain is probably about one because it's a common collector amplifier. So the output signal is roughly at the same AC voltage levels that the input signal is. How about the current though? I want to talk a little bit about the current flow in this circuit. Let's start with the DC current. Well, we're going to have a DC current. I could call this the collector current that flows down through that transistor. There's going to be a little bit of base current, but I'm going to neglect. The DC current, IC, mostly flows through the emitter. So let's just label that IC as well. Because it's DC, none of it goes over to the load resistor. How about the AC current? Well, again, we're going to have a little bit of AC current coming into the base, but I'm going to neglect it because the beta of a transistor is large enough that we should have a factor of 100 or so difference between the currents on the right and the currents on the left. So let's label the AC part of the current as little i sub c. The same current flows here through the emitter, but because this is a large capacitor, we now have two different branches of that collector current or emitter current. Part of it's going to flow through this resistor, and I could call that IE1, and then part of it's going to flow through our load resistor, and I could call that IE2. There's been a current divider. That's the reason why this R sub E isn't so good. It bleeds off some of the current, the AC current that we hope would be going to the load resistor. Let's do a brief AC analysis to see how that shows up in the voltage gain. If we think about our load voltage as being at this point in the circuit and our signal somewhere on the left, then our net gain would be some input voltage divider times our gain, which for a common collector amplifier is just one, times our output voltage divider. So for our output voltage divider in a common collector amplifier, I have to remember that there's a little emitter resistance R sub E right here, and then I'll have a voltage divider across these three resistors. So we have the emitter resistance in parallel with the load resistance, and then the little RE appears in the denominator. Since little R sub E is typically a very small resistance, this output voltage divider is some number that we hope approaches one. Practically speaking, though, RE may not be as high as we would like. What happens if RE is not high? Well, if RE is reduced, then RE in parallel with RL is also reduced. And if RE in parallel with RL is reduced, then it makes this fraction a number that's not as close to one as it just was. So it causes this full ratio 
to be reduced a little bit. We want it to be one, but it's going to drop to 95%, 90%, 85% if R sub E is reduced. The reason why that happens is because of the current divider that I just pointed out. But there's a way around this problem. If we replace resistor R sub E with a current source, then all of the AC current coming through the transistor will go to the load resistor. That's one of the advantages of using current source biasing. Let me show you how it works. In this case, we'll again have some signal showing up at our base. And if everything is biased correctly, then that signal should show up at our emitter. The AC portion of it will then flow to our load resistor. What's the resistance looking down into a perfect current source? Well, it's infinite. So our voltage divider is going to look more attractive now than it did in the last example. Our overall expression for the gain would then look something like this. We would have an input voltage divider. We would then have a gain, which is one for a common collector amplifier. And then we would have our output voltage divider. But here, our output voltage divider will be set up by only two resistors, R sub L and R sub E. Previously, I had to write something in parallel with R sub L, but I don't have to do that anymore. In other words, the gain here, the AC gain, is always going to be higher than it was in the last example. If you use a current source, your gain is a little bit better. Your buffer is better. That's the advantage of using a current source. There's another advantage as well, but it requires careful biasing of the circuit. If you arrange it so that I matches the required DC current, then you can set it up so that the only current going through the load resistor would be the AC current. If all of the DC current is passing down through the current source, then you can get rid of the capacitor. Getting rid of the capacitor is important in integrated circuit designs because capacitors are fairly large components. If you're really careful with your DC biasing, then getting rid of these capacitors can save a lot of chip space. So this is one of the techniques for getting rid of capacitors. Make sure that your DC emitter voltage is right at ground. I handles the DC bias point, And then all of the AC current is diverted into your load, which is automatically an AC signal. How do you create such a DC current source? Well, you can just use a current mirror. We've talked about this in previous videos. Using this reference resistor, you can program a current into your current mirror, and you can be sure then that the same DC current will flow through this transistor. As we've seen before with current mirrors, you still need a reference resistor. But with only one reference resistor, you can mirror that current to multiple right-hand side transistors, like the one that we have right here. This avoids using a lot of resistors if you have to have a lot of current sources on the same circuit. Let me show you how it works for a common emitter amplifier. What would we do here? Which one of these resistors should we replace with current source and have everything work out to our advantage? Should we replace R sub E? Would that work? Well, let's see if we have an AC voltage coming in here at the base we would typically say that the AC voltage would show up here at the emitter, but that's not going to happen here. The reason why it can't happen here is because I is a DC current source. It's not allowed to have an AC offset. A current source is a current source, only one current can flow through it. I could say that because there's no AC portion of our emitter current, there's no AC portion of our collector current either. Without any AC current coming into the transistor, there can't be any AC current going through the load resistor. So the gain here would just be zero. The proper way to do it is to replace the collector resistor. Let's assume that we have some signal applied to the base of that transistor. The signal would have some DC voltage, which I'll call VB, and some AC components, which we can call little v sub b. That signal would then show up at the emitter of the transistor. The DC component would change just a little bit. We have to subtract 0.7 from the base voltage. And then the AC component of the voltage would be identical. Let's now consider the emitter current. The emitter current is just the net voltage at the emitter divided by R sub E. How about the collector current? Well, the collector current 
enters the transistor, and if beta is suitably large, then that should be the same as the emitter current. The collector current has two different components, so I want to divide this expression now into two components. It has a DC component and an AC component. The AC component cannot enter that current source. The current through this current source is I. I is a DC current. It doesn't have an AC component because we've defined it a priori as a DC current source. Likewise, we can't have any DC current going to the load resistor because that capacitor here would block it. What we should do then is set I to handle all of the DC current and then allow all of the AC currents going into the collector of that transistor to be diverted to the load. If this is I, then everything is nicely arranged so that our load resistor R sub L gets the AC portion of the current. Let's label our load current as I sub L and the current down here that I have circled is going to have to flow into the transistor, so let's identify that as negative I sub L. The voltage across our load resistor is just I times R, and I can substitute in for I sub L. The key ratio here is the load resistance to the emitter resistance. You might recall that the general expression for gain in a common emitter amplifier is the resistances attached to the collector divided by the resistances attached to the emitter. Look at this. We don't have any collector resistance up here. It's just the load resistance. So that's really nice because the load resistance on its own is higher than the load resistor in parallel with anything else, right? In other words, if I had a collector resistor R sub C up here instead of a current source, then this expression would have looked a little bit different. This ratio is always less than this ratio. I can achieve a higher gain. What we've seen in looking here at the common emitter and common collector configurations is that there are two advantages to replacing certain resistors with current sources. First of all, you can wind up with higher gains. Secondly, you can replace some resistors, which might be large in integrated circuits, with current sources. And current sources can be made with transistors. These take up less space. So overall, you can save space and get higher values for the gain.